Hi, my name is Rob Hampton. I run Heartwood Guitar Instruction. And the three skills I'm about to teach you are skills I teach all my private students. I've taught hundreds of students how to play guitar. But you very rarely see these skills taught in instructional books or videos. I don't think I've ever seen the smooth move taught by really anyone else. And so I actually had to give stupid names to all these skills I'm gonna teach you because they don't have names. Now these are skills that all good guitarists use and I don't think they're keeping it a secret from everyone else. I just don't think they're aware of what they're doing. These skills are typically developed over years of practice. And so let me save you a couple years and just show them to you right now. The first skill I wanna teach you is called the smooth move. I realize smooth move is also an herbal laxative. So once you're done giggling, I'll show you the skill. Um, it's basically what you do when you're moving from one chord to another as you're strumming. And um, this is what it looks like. I'm gonna do a little uh, slow-mo thing here. Um, if I'm going like down, down, up, up, down, up, watch this. Do you see how I lifted my fingers right before I moved to the A chord there? And I hit open strings. I'll do it extra slow-mo this time. Down, down, up, up, down, lift. And this is what it sounds like in context. See, it sounds nice and smooth, hence smooth move. Now, a lot of beginners feel like they're obliged to like stay on one chord until the last possible second and then pounce onto the next chord. And, you know, those are good intentions, you know, trying to do it right, but it's actually not the right way to do it and it ends up sounding super choppy. So give yourself a break if you don't use the smooth move already and leave early, lift, off the chord you're playing before you hit the last upstrum in your strum pattern, assuming your strum pattern has an upstrum at the end of it. And you're gonna hit open strings momentarily, gently, you don't wanna like accent it or anything, but just hit them gently and then get your fingers to the next chord, hopefully before the next down strum in the next measure. Now this skill can be hard to learn without a teacher and so if you'd like some help, I teach it in my course, Strum and Sing in 60 Days. I'll take you step by step through the process, learning like when exactly do you lift your fingers and you do several exercises that make the whole process pretty easy. The second skill is a little more well known, but I still see a lot of guitarists who played for years and weren't aware of it. I call it fretting close to the high wire. And the idea here is whenever you're fretting a note, try to get as close as you can to the fret wire that is like closer to the body of your guitar. So like if you're a righty, then it's gonna to be to the right of your finger. If you're a lefty, then it's gonna to be to the left of your finger. And um, so like if I'm fretting the fifth fret here, I wanna get my finger up really close to the fret wire, not on top of it, because then it'll sound damped, but just to the side of it. So it sounds nice and bright. And the reason for that is the closer you get to the fret wire, the less hard you have to press. It could still sound good to fret like way back here, but you're gonna be cranking down on that string really hard. And one of the basic principles of really playing any musical instrument is to not have much body tension, to try to relax. And so fretting close to the high wire will improve the sound of your playing, it will reduce the chance of injury, and it'll just make playing more fun. Now. Just fretting close to the high wire in and of itself won't do that much help. You also need to know how hard to press. And so in my course that I teach, I also teach a concept called the pressure number where you kind of discover how hard you have to press to get a note to ring clearly. This last technique I've only seen taught by my friend Joe Walker who also teaches here in Seattle and Troy Grady who's like one of his heroes. And what it is is it's what you do with your picking hand if you're using a guitar pick anyway. Um, and it's a, a variety of ways that good guitarists touch their guitar or their guitar strings um, while they're picking in order to orient their hand. Because, you know, I think the hardest thing about playing guitar is picking the right string. And if you're just like floating up here in space trying to hit the right string as you're picking, um, it's really hard. And so what good guitarists have learned to do is to uh, like, 
you see this with bluegrass musicians like Doc Watson, he does this. They extend their fingers down onto the pick guard um, as they're picking. Um, you'll also see like people like Joe Satriani just kind of relax their fingers, but they're still grazing the pick guard. I guess his hands are so big that he doesn't really need to stick them out. And um, what I do a lot is um, brush the uh, bridge pins uh, if I'm playing an acoustic or just the bridge, if I'm playing an electric with the palm of my hand, like this part of my hand as I'm picking the bass strings, or if I'm picking treble strings, I um, brush the bass strings with this part of my hand, which also damps the strings, which keeps them from getting noisy as I'm picking other strings. So anyway, there are lots of different ways to do this thing I call brushing. Just some general tips. The, one of the reasons why I gave it the name brushing is because I wanted to emphasize that you're not touching the guitar with a lot of force. Like you don't want to like plant your fingertips on the body of the guitar when you're picking because that's going to restrict motion. You need to keep your wrist free uh, when if you want to pick uh, quickly and accurately. And so um, whatever you're doing to touch the guitar, it shouldn't you should be using a lot of force, just gently touching the guitar. And usually your your hand's gonna uh, move across the guitar some way as you're touching it, unless um, you've got kind of the heel of your palm touching the bridge. Now this, uh, I think one of the reasons why this technique isn't taught very much is because um, whenever I teach it to my students, they're pretty resistant to it because they're used to doing it the old way. Even though it's sloppy, they're kind of set in their ways. And then I ask them to try to start brushing. And at first, you know, it's kind of like going from a tricycle to a bike. It's, at first, you're just crashing all over the place. It feels weird and awkward. You're not good at it. And um, But I encourage you, if you want to um, improve your picking, improve your accuracy and your speed of picking the guitar. Um, it, understand that this technique is necessary really for doing that. And so you kind of have to force yourself at first to try some of these techniques and just find the one that seems to work the best for you, even though they'll all feel a little awkward at first. So I would recommend probably just like try sticking out your pinky as you pick and have it brush across the pick guard as you play. So I think ultimately all three of these skills aren't taught very much because they're nuances, but they're such important nuances. And you know, music, to make music sound good, you need to have nuance. Anyone can kind of just like bang their way through a song, but to really capture the emotion of music, you need to know these subtle but really important skills. And so if that is important to you and you'd like to learn more of the nuance of playing this wonderful instrument, I really encourage you to become a member of Heartwood Guitar. Come join our family and I'd love to teach you. So hope to see you on the flip side. Take care.